we go. Hi, so again, just a really quick step back. Um, child development, spring 2021. So we're just gonna go over the syllabus today and hopefully I can answer any questions is what I'm. So again, here's contact information. Here's our, here's our book that we need and we're getting into our course overview. So I have to put in the, the boilerplate course overview that has been approved by the state, state um, chancellor's office. But at the same time, I uh, wanna make sure that those green lines, you know, are just like a side note for me. Um, so again, I'm not gonna read to you, but in an overview sense, this class talks about how humans develop from conception to 18. And that's not when people stop growing, but everything that you've experienced so far, you're going to like just learn what that really was all about, right? The, the, the actual terms, the scientific terms and the theories that go behind human development. So again, you guys are practically experts already because you've already lived it. Every single term in this book, you've probably been through already. Almost every single term, yeah. Um, okay, so we have these things, every class has these student learning outcomes and we measure um, sometime in the, somewhere during the course, this amount of this type of learning. And it can be measured in any way we want to. And so I gave you guys a little heads up on how I'm measuring that. Um, we're doing a lifeline final project where you actually do a, a PowerPoint or something similar and each slide is one chapter. So 16 slides-ish, super easy. You pick your favorite three terms from there that apply to you. So this is all about you. And we'll actually have um, draft due dates in the middle. So you guys don't, don't have to wait till the very end to put it all together. Um, all, the second one is critically evaluate. We're gonna look at all the different things that um, affect children's development. And so that is gonna be another choice grid where I give you guys nine different choices on a different project on how you can express how you know this information. And the last one is uh, applied developmental theory. You will actually interview people and share in the discussion boards, whether it's your your parents, your siblings, and things like that. So it'll be it'll be interesting. You're going to reflect a little bit about about yourself in here. Um, Title IX is again um, a federal standard for uh, equality in um, United States schools, and so as a college student, you are protected under Title IX. Um, the last administration had changed the verbiage, and now it's changing back to be more protective of people, especially in terms of um, assault victims. So I'm really um, happy that you guys are protected on campus and off. So if you ever have an issue of even that could be like domestic violence, you please talk to me and we'll get you some support. Um, there is the, there is like a, a procedure that I need to go through because I, again, am your professor and not your therapist. Um, but at the same time, I wanna make sure that you guys are supported. Again, even if you're at work and you're getting harassed at work, you as a college student are protected under Title IX. So let me know and let me see how I can help you, okay? Uh, basic needs statement. I love, huge, huge heart goes out to, huge heart goes out to SEC for having a pantry, for having, we're putting a basic needs place together to where it's not just food, but like, you know, shampoo and things like that. I know money is super tight and, you know, jobs are crazy. It's just wild out there. Uh, as a social worker, that was the hardest part of my job was, um, food, bus pass, housing, and guess what? SEC doesn't provide housing, but the bus pass you guys get, the food you get, supplies, I mean, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable the amount of support that's on this campus. Again, I put the hyperlinks in here and please put it this way. There are so many services on campus. Everything, everyone transitioned to online services um, or emails or phone or whatever. Please use what's out there. Your student fees go towards those things. So please use them, you've already paid for them, like health services, and we'll talk about that. So we'll have a presentation actually. Uh, academic accommodations. Uh, my specialty is actually in neurodiversity or neurodivergent um, minds learning and people. And so I am very, very supportive of people who um, have different needs. And so if you need some accommodations, I have gotten some DSPS letters already that said people need extra time on quizzes or whatever. You let me know what you need. It has to come as a certified letter from them for me to extend those, those uh, accommodations to you, but I'm more than happy to do that. And again, we'll talk more about the flex, the flexibility with the um, target dates and things like that. And I'll see what I can do to, you know, make things better for you equitably for everybody, right? Um, so again, I've already mentioned this earlier. Uh, this is an online class. Um, drop, you can drop into the lecture. You can watch the recordings, however you want to do it. 
Um, I just think that life needs to be more flexible now than less flexible. Um, and I'm really hoping that there is a way that you guys can successfully navigate this class, whether it be live, watching recordings, or just doing it 100% solo. But just keep in contact is what I'm saying. Okay. Just, again, this is, this is a fucky time. So let's just make sure we just are getting through it together. Um, and I put a couple of graphics in this year. You know, I wanted to be a little bit more sort of so black and white because I, I tend to be a little bit linear on the left left brain. But I wanted to be, but I'm also, you know, kind of zany. So I wanted to make sure that we warmed it up a little bit. So again, come to class, the virtual online meetings, if you can, if you can't, fine as well. I am getting, I am giving people the option and we'll talk a little bit in a little bit about discussion boards. We're going to do, we're going to meet Mondays and Wednesdays and Mondays the lecture and Wednesdays is going to be the online discussion board. Meaning you can do it, uh, we can actually discuss it as if we were sitting in class. Um, but if you don't, if you want to just like seriously introvert and put your hoodie on and not talk to people, then just do the regular discussion board. Totally. Either one is good. Um, so add and drop procedures. Does anybody know these add and drop dates? Because these are important. I'm going to have you guys write these down at the very least. If you don't, if you didn't print one of these out, totally fine. Can somebody tell me at least one of those dates? Oh, wait. Where would you, where would somebody find something like this? Hint, hint, hint. The SEC website. Oh, web advisor. Yeah, or web advisor. It's it, a post for the class. Absolutely. Um, so do we know any of those dates? Lots of, when's the last day you drop this class with, and get your money back? I put it out. The last, the last day, um, I believe, like to drop, to drop. Um, like if you're in this class and you're like, this lady is crazy. To drop with like a full refund. Yeah, get um, your money back. Is on, um, is on the 21. Yeah. I believe. So yes, absolutely perfect. Perfect. So it's usually two weeks after the class, like the class begins and it's the Sunday. So like would be like last night, but two weeks from now. So write this down, February 21st. Yeah. So like if you take, if you look, look at my syllabus and you're like, this lady's crazy, that's too, whatever, or my job changed or I have to move or whatever. You have two whole weeks to decide to drop and get a full refund, right? Some people make that choice after that time. You can't get your refund. So it's up to you. Yeah, I can't make those choices for you, but if you need to chat, chit chat with me about it, cool. Also, my syllabi look pretty similar from every semester. So if that's the case and you actually turned in a few things, hold on to it and keep it for next semester. Last data file for pass, no pass. Do you guys know what that is? The yeah, 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 yeah. March. March 12th. Mar yes. March. Thank you, Donia. March 12th, or is that Monique? I can't tell. Who's Donia? Okay, so March 12th, that gives you like a month. Wait, every March, yeah, like a month. But here's the deal pass, no pass doesn't always work. So you need to talk to a counselor first. I already have emails like set up to remind you guys of these things. Um, but at the same time, again, some, some colleges that you're transferring to will take up credit, no credit, or pass, no pass. Some colleges won't, so just be aware. Sometimes um, it's if you're taking this class for an employer, they want to see a letter grade or they, they don't care. They just want to see that you passed it. And that just means a C, right? Big deal. That's awesome. Last day to drop this class with a W. I'll give you a hint. It's two weeks towards the end of the class. That one's all the way in May. Actually, that's a month. Is it May 9th? Yay, Amy. Very good. So I go to the I go to the college website where it says instructional calendar, and I literally just print it out just so I have it. Plus, it has the holidays on there too. <laughs> so speaking of holidays, we have a holiday this Friday and we have a holiday Monday. So we will not be meeting like this on Monday, but next Monday, but we will meet the following Wednesday for the discussion board. So um, yeah, so it's kind of funky that we have two of those holidays like Monday and Friday, but blah. blah whatever. Um, and then towards the end of the semester, we are to middle of the semester, we have Cesar Chavez day. It's on a Wednesday, middle of the week. Enjoy. And then towards the end of the semester, we have a more Memorial day, which is the last Monday of the semester. It's so crazy. We'll have like Memorial day holiday. And then that following Saturday is the last day of class. 
now speaking of that last day of class june 5th june 5th that is a saturday 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 even though i run this class monday through sunday that saturday is the last day that's the only kind of hiccup in our little hamster wheel schedule but we'll go over that together um also um communicating online just be professional I've already gotten emails um, from students and you know, at the bottom it'll say sent from iPhone or sent from Samsung phone, which I don't mind. Cause again, we all communicate in the methods that we can, but I've gotten emails and messages or texts, not texts, but just emails that said, well, my work schedule interferes with this class. And I thought I was setting, signing up for an online class. Yeah, you are signing up for an online class. I'm not forcing you to come to lectures, but if you start a message with, well, I didn't, you didn't say, hi, my name is, I'm confused, like anything like that. It was, it was not the best way to start off, right? So again, I'm not expecting like a formal letter to the queen, um, but if we're writing something in our class, no emojis, no hashtags, things like that. Um, and again, if you're communicating, we'd, we'd be back and forth. I'd start formal and then sometimes we just kind of disintegrate into something a little bit more casual, but um, just beware that this is not, a Reddit thread or an Insta story or a, a 60 second TikTok, right? Just keep, keep it collegiate, right? Um, there you go. And then um, again with me, Canvas is best. I get back to people within that day or the next day, the latest. Um, for those of you who have taken classes with me, you already know what I'm, you already know what's up. I'm pretty good with that kind of stuff, but I'll, just stay in contact. If you got a question, just let me know. I'm here for you. Um, I gave you a couple tips on how to be successful. And again, here's the late policy. Do the work, <laughs> but I'm not gonna freak out if it's late. That's really what the policy says. I don't, if you turn something in like four weeks late, I don't grade it right at, versus the people who are doing stuff on time. I try to grade in chunks and it's a little bit hard if this policy kind of backfires on me a little bit because some people will like do turn in six things at once while I'm just trying to grade a little bit at a time. So just get it in. Again, if it's a couple of days late, even if it's an exam, the only thing I want on time this, this time, and I've changed this a little bit, is that the discussion boards. If we're on week six and we're talking about um, like a toddler's cognitive ability, but um, you're answering the one from theories from week two, it's just you, you're not really having a discussion. You're just throwing words in on a cork board, really, a virtual cork board. So if it's past the date of the discussion board where it's due on Sundays, I, you know, that's when I'm just not going to grade it, right? So, and that's not a big deal because it's 10 whole points and I'll show you how I give you like a, a safety net for that as well. So, um, so every week we have these activities, except for week one, it's a little bit different than every after week one, everything kind of falls in line. Um, the chapter outlines. Again, every week you will turn in a chapter outline. I just have it due on Wednesdays. So you guys have time to turn it in. I used to have people do it on Mondays, but I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Even if, even with the Wednesday due date, you can, if it works in your work schedule to turn it in on Thursdays, do that. That's fine with me. I trust me. I, again, flexibility is going to help your brain relax and actually learn. Um, so again, I only require up to two pages of an outline. Now, when I outline, it's like eight pages. You can type it, you can handwrite it, you can mind map it, you can give me um, like some sort of art project. However, it works in your brain to outline a chapter, do that. Either take a picture of it or upload a file. I'm flexible. I actually gave you guys examples in the supportive module because you'll see getting started module and I'll show you Canvas in a sec. You'll see getting started module, week one module, or I'm sorry, getting started, supportive module, week one module. That's all you see right now. It's just the first three modules. That's it. And so again, a lot of stuff. I have a lot of stuff out there for you. And again, if life, you need something a little bit extra, let me know. But I hopefully I got a lot of the bases covered. Um, the discussion boards every week, 10 points. Now, you, you want to have an actual conversation in there. And some people are really good at it and some people hate him. Here's the rub. I am required to do discussion boards, required. So I try to make that, I replicated the activities that would actually do in class. And we're going to do them live if you come to the live meetings on Wednesdays. Great. 
If not, just do them like regulars. So by Wednesday night, you should have maybe like an initial post in there. It's like, oh, here's some questions you wanted to answer. So between Wednesday and like Sunday is when you answer people. I used to have like that final date be on like a Friday or Saturday, but now I just put everything on Sunday. You guys can do it early, but if, if you wait till the last second, it's going to pile up a little bit. Uh, and then deep dive personal learning journal. This means that after you've read the stuff and did the outline and did the discussion board and maybe took the quiz, right? This is your place to say, this is what I learned. This is, this is what I take away, right? Give me a few sentences on like, this is how it affects me or this is what I thought was cool. And give me another um, resource that kind of goes down the rabbit hole a little bit. That's why I call it the deep dive, right? Because our book, Again, it's an intro, it's not everything and it's, it's good, but maybe this like sparks, like we'll talk about genetics and you're like, whoa, that was a really cool concept. And then you kind of go like off on a tangent or down a rabbit hole about that one particular con um, concept. Share that, share that. Plus it also gives me a view of what's interesting to you and also things that are out there that maybe I'm missing because I'm in my little teacher bubble, right? So guess what? If you notice here at the at this, this little green note I put here, the lowest outline will be dropped at the end of the semester. The lowest discussion board is dropped at the end of the semester. The lowest personal journal is dropped at the end of the semester. So what I do, so again, this is, look at 5, 10, that's 25 points. It's not the end of the world. If for some reason you are sick or you have to travel or you whatever, like, like if your grandma's dog died or your dog's grandma died, like either one, you need to take a week off, take a week off. It's not the end of the world. Plus all those things that I have assigned, you can always turn them in late, right? Because it's fast, it's a target date, right? It's a little bit past a target date, great. Don't get behind, that's hard. Once you get behind, it's hard to catch up, it really is. Um, but again, at the same time, I've had people who like missed like one outline submission and like have a heart attack and drop the class. Don't do that. This is a retention tool, so you don't have to, you don't have to drop the class, you just don't. This is not that class. This is not the class to be stressed out over. <laughs> and then I'll even help you calculate how many points you can miss and still get an A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so assignments, this is the snapshot for the whole semester. I watered things down because if it didn't match those student learning outcomes, I'm not doing it, quite frankly. I don't believe in busy work. Although outline looks like busy work, trust me, it's not. Discussion boards, helpful to talk, even gripe. <laughs> even complain with your friends, right? Um, and then the personal learning journal, I, I really think this is really important. It's called a formative assessment. How is it affecting you? If you're just a robot and you're like learning material and spitting about it out at me, like what's the point? What's the point of that? Save your money, save your time, do something else for the next four months, right? No. So all these, all these things, I'm really trying to be very mindful of time and connection to the material and connection to what we need to learn and measure. Um, so I created a choice board, which is kind of like a, we're going to talk about, again, the history and the culture and, and all the different things that can affect children's development. Um, yesterday on YouTube, I saw that there were, was it YouTube? No, I was on Google and at the very bottom it said, under the search bar, it said um, they released A Day in the Life. I don't know if you guys saw that. It's a documentary, it's about an hour and a half. And it was, uh, they had people submit about 350,000 submissions of recording one day on July 25th of 2020 all over the world and they compiled it into a documentary. So the reason I bring that up is that um, <laughs> looking at the different cultures, looking at different people and how they raise their kids, but they did a really quick snapshot of like all these different cultures brushing their teeth really fast. And really interesting to see this compare and contrast between the United States and other countries and whatnot. Um, you know, and like our five-year-olds are having, you know, massive backpack on and going to kindergarten and their five-year-olds are like chasing the goat down because she forgot to latch the, the gate while she was milking, you know? So it's like really interesting to see the differences. And so this choice board gives a bunch of different options based on your learning, your learning preference. So I'm really excited to see what you guys come up with. The Lifeline Project is um, the, the culmination of the entire semester. Let me see, I've got a screenshot. Am I on mute? I'm not on mute. No, no. Can you guys hear me? Maybe it's just your connection. Let me double check. On mute. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, so Lifeline Project, again, is that thing where you do one slide per chapter, super easy. And then we'll have like a draft halfway through so you guys are like on track. 
Um, I think it's really important. Yeah, I think it's really important to, um, I added that draft piece. Instead of having two separate assignments, I do one assignment with a draft due date so we can make sure that we're right on track. Some people turn it in last semester, like a really cute presentation, but they just regurgitated the definitions. I don't need a regurgitated definition. I have a book. I just taught it. So you just lectured to you. I don't need the definition back at me. How did that definition apply to your life? If you're talking about attachment theory and you struggled uh, attaching to primary caretakers because of something that happened in your life or whatnot, or there wasn't a goodness of fit between you and your primary caretaker, yeah, talk about that. I don't need to have the apps, actual definition. So we'll talk more about these assignments as they go. And I have instructions and videos on all this stuff. Hopefully um, ex assign, um, examples too. At the end, we'll have a course summary paper where you just say, hey, what did I learn? Not, not a big deal. Uh, and then the portfolio is actually compiled electronically through portfolio. This actually helps you get all your school work together in one place. Portfolio is also owned by Instructure, who's the same owners as Canvas. So it actually seamlessly kind of works together. But at the same time, it's kind of like a junior version of LinkedIn, which is kind of like the business person's um, what does this person know and how do I know it? Because they showed me their work inside their, their portfolio. Yeah. So it's, it's more for you, but um, we'll have kind of a check-in on how to do that, the best practices for that before the end of the semester. So again, your, your last month of semester won't be like, oh my gosh, I have these, all these things to do. No, we're, we're going to do it slowly and methodically. Um, so that's it. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's it. I, assessments is a fancy term for tests, right? So quizzes and exams, quiz at the end of, this, at the end of the, each chapter, exam at the end of each unit. And I'll show you how the units are broken down. Pretty straightforward, goes right through the chapters of the book. Um, let me double check. Yeah. Eddie, I think there's gotta be something, what's up with your connection? But yeah, cause I am not muted. Yeah. So maybe jump out and jump back in. Um, and then he, here for extra credit, um, I do have a couple things like watch a documentary. I might put that day in the life in there too. Um, but again, speaking of extra credit, I do have on the exams, I keep the formats pretty standardized because some people are good at true or false. Some people are terrible at it. Some good are good at multiple choice. Some people are terrible at it. Some good, some people are good at essays. Some people are terrible at it. So I do like pretty an equitable, equitable distribution of those things. Um, and, but at the end, there's a 10 point essay on every question. It's not the end of the world. I usually ask your opinion. So you don't have to research it. You don't have to plagiarize. <laughs> um, but I can always give more than 10 points. I've had people like blow my hair back and I gave them 15. Same thing, there's an actual extra credit five point essay after that, but people don't do it. And then those are the people who are like, I need five extra points. Well, I could have given you seven had you done it and, and like blown my hair back. So it's up to you. Again, your effort is, is reinforced and rewarded here. Absolutely. Um, so let's see, grading, I broke this down into units, pretty straightforward. This first week we have a discussion board and a scavenger hunt, super easy. Um, if you do the scavenger hunt, you'll get the points. It, it's, it's, there's no like, like obviously there's right answers, but I don't like penalize you for wrong answers. So just do it. And by the way, I will cut that one off after the first week. So you shouldn't be scavenger hunting the syllabus or canvas after the first week. You should be pretty, should be pretty comfortable with it by then. And then we have a quiz at the end of the week. And again, don't freak out if you don't have your book. I give you the outline. Yeah, so you can have your outline sitting right in front of you and take the quiz. It's up to you. Yeah. Um, so again, I put I just kind of um, separated everything out here. Um, uh, we have about a thousand points in this class. Um, sometimes the points will change. I'm always in favor of the student. Um, sometimes let's say if let's say uh, like last semester, I didn't open the module on Monday and I opened it Wednesday, which cut you guys out by two days. I would, you know, either make something zero points or extra credit, or I'm like really flexible, but I always err in your favor. Oh yeah, last semester I had a power out, I had a power outage for four days. That was fun. Um, so I was like, in my whole street, it was my whole street, right? And um, and so I was like at my boss's house and like that whole week was like extra credit. Like I just took off the points of everything. So if anybody did it, they just got out of zero points, they just got their five or 10 or whatever kind of situation. So I'm it's, as long as you guys are flexible with me, I'm flexible with you and we'll make things happen. Um, 
I'm, I'm a big fan of Amanda Gorman's now. She like totally was super fantastic at the inauguration. So this is a really quick quote. Don't hesitate, don't wait, don't aspire, achieve. That's just like fancy way of like Nike has been like, do it, right? Just do it, just do it. And it's hard. Sometimes you just want to be in bed with your, you know, your furry support staff because mine is in my bed right now. And I'm like, oh, that'd be so nice. Um, grade breakdown is pretty straightforward, but um, now she's barking. Oh yeah, excuse me. And then I put a calendar that's very specific. So here's the method to my madness. Here's week one, but here's unit one, right? So unit one is one, two, three, four. This is the foundations of human beings, right? We'll talk about the science of human development. Why do we even study this business? Then we talk about theories, genetics, and then we talk about prenatal birth and development. And yes, there'll be like birthing videos, not super crazy, but enough. So if you look on Mondays, I open, I open the, the, the module, you guys are ready to go. And again, these are our holidays, but on Mondays we'll meet at Zoom, uh, do a Zoom meeting 10, 15, just like you're here. Same thing on Wednesdays, but this will be the live discussion board. Every, um, I push the outlines due to, um, to Fridays. I just pushed it. I was like, yeah, whatever. Let me make sure I, I switch that because I think I have them on Wednesdays on the calendar, Fridays. And I may have put, um, I may have put Wednesdays inside of, in, inside of the syllabus. So maybe I'm gonna move that. Oh, by the way, if there's any typos, please let me know. I've already already found one on, <laughs> on one this morning. So, so I'm gonna move the outlines due to Fridays. Wednesdays is fine, but Fridays is fine too. Um, so again, if you wanna turn them in early, great, go for it, right? If you wanna turn it in Saturday, that's fine. And then again, your Wednesdays, you're gonna put your first discussion post in there. Now, it's not, it's not graded. Like I can't say, oh, like, you know, Amy didn't put the it in by Wednesday at eight. I can't, I'm not following that because there's only, only one due date on the discussion board, which is Sunday. I put that in there as a nudge. Like here's me nudging you. Get in there by at least Wednesday, maybe Monday. I don't, it's up to your schedule. Put the answer the questions, interact with the discussion board. But again, if you are coming to Wednesday's live discussion boards, you don't have to do the one online at all. So make your choices. You can rotate weeks. It, it's up to you. I'm, I'm trying something new out. So we have a little bit more options for participation. So get your first discussion post in there, hopefully by Wednesday. Then you'll have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday to, to respond and actually have a conversation with a classmate, right? It's not like just like a cork board that you're putting a, a sticky note on. Question? Yes, no, maybe so? Cool, so everything is pretty much the same, but except for we had a holiday, I bumped, I bumped it. Again, some of you are like really compulsive adult due dates. Some of you are like, yeah, I'll get that. I'll, I'll do all 10 outlines at week 10. It's fine. Because it doesn't really work well that way, but. Um, so this whole first week, we just need to focus on getting your book, right? Get that outline. If you don't have your book, you're here today, which is great. Work on the prep module. There's a lot of things in there for you to watch and, and read and respond to. Um, if, excuse me, if you're uh, doing that intro discussion board, please post by Wednesday so people can get to know you. Um, some of you have already done it, actually. <laughs> and then this, this is what's the rest of which is in the prep module. There's videos. Here's a syllabus scavenger hunt. Yeah, there's a quick little survey. It's more like a checklist. Uh, and then you do have a quiz one due by eight o'clock on Sunday. It's 10 points. It's five true and false, five multiple choice. You have two times, two chances to take it. And you have 30 minutes each chance. So even if you don't have your book and you didn't want to print out the outline or even look at the outline, probably could do an okay job. Yeah, again, it's not hard. It, you guys like, yeah, I'm telling you the only time, the only reason people fail this class is if something else comes up, like life got in the way. That's it. That's really it. The average eight grade in this class is like an 88, 89%. Yeah. Even through COVID. Yeah. So again, see here's unit one, then unit two, then unit three is purple. And again, it, it, colors really don't matter, but I just want to show you how we have four chapters. Then it goes three, 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 and three. At the end of each unit, there's an exam. That's it. So you do these four chapters, you take the exam. Now you will still have that quiz about that week, right? And you'll still have the discussion board and the deep dive and whatnot. 
So if you want to get all those things, you if you want to move all those things to Saturday, just so you do your keep your exams on Sundays, it's up to you. Maybe do your exam on Saturday. It doesn't either way. Do your exam Monday morning. It's up to you, right? Don't get behind because it's hard to catch up. It is. So you'll see here that these again are foundation chapters, but then it, these ones start creating a pattern, right? So this is we're talking about an age of a of a child. Then we'll talk about these three domains. The first domain is their body, biosocial. The second domain is their thinking, their cognition. The third domain is their emotions, right? Then we move to the next age, like the kid gets older and we kind of repeat the process again. We talk about not, not at infants, but now we're talking about early childhood, like their body. Then we have social, then we have spring break. Then we talk, then we come back and we talk about their thinking. And then we talk about their emotions. Then we'll repeat this again, but with middle childhood, like kids like six to 10, their body, their brains, their emotions. Then adolescence, body, brains, emotions. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Again, follows the book, really predictable. Anytime I have a, an assignment, it is due on a Saturday only because I don't like to put it on the, like right before an exam. I put it the week before the exam. So you can focus on one of these and then have the exam the next week, right? Makes sense. Again, here's a draft the week after you have an exam. And here's this one. We can, this is your work weeks here. So pretty straightforward um, class schedule. Things don't change. Like even if, even if for some reason I'm sick for this, this just keeps moving, right? Because we can't take a week off. We can't, we cannot, right? You can if you need to, because remember, I gave you those, those catch-all points, but let's go back to this point, the point list. So if the approximate number of points in this class is 1,000, how many can you miss and still get 90%? What's 10% off of 1,000? I know it's math, but this isn't a math class, but math will help you with your grade. A hundred? Yes, you Thank can God. miss a hundred points and still get an A in this class. <laughs> I'm taking a stats class, so let's hope that, <laughs> that improves. Yeah, ten percent bell curve right here, <laughs> bell curve right. So think about it. Think about it. I don't tell people that you could just go ahead and miss everything, but like a, uh, so if we have sixteen chapters and the outlines are only five points, me I dropped the lowest. That's really like five times fifteen. Um, yeah, that's not a lot. That's only like 65 points right there, right? 5 and 15, 60, no, 60, 75 points. Yeah. So if you want to, if you're the person who's like, I don't do outlines, that's cool. Right. But now you're guaranteeing that that last 25 points, you didn't miss on a couple in a test, couple in a quiz, couple on an assignment. It's up to you. Right. Or you can just take a stab at it and just do everything. And if you miss a couple of points here, I still drop the lowest at the end, like during grading week, I still drop the lowest. So let's say you did all the outlines and all the discussion boards and all the quizzes and all the reflections, and you just missed a couple points here and there. Well, everybody gets that 25 or 30 points and it just kind of fills in the blanks. It's helpful or it could bump you up, right? But it's up to you. There's, I mean, there's people who towards the end of the class calculate that they didn't even need to take the final. And it's not cumulative, it's just unit tests. Right, right. So it's up to you if that last final is 50 points. Some people are like, no, nah, I'm not doing the project either. That's cool. If you're just going for pass, no pass, calculate it, figure it out. You can do that. This class is, is doable for that. So any questions before I jump over to Canvas? How's it looking? Doable? This class is very, very doable. Very, very doable, yeah. And again, if you stick it out for a couple of weeks and then drop, just keep your stuff and come back. Um, or if you came back from last semester, just resubmit your stuff. It's cool. I, I'm down with that. The, the learning happens no matter what. The learning happens no matter what, right? It's just how we do that, how we how we come to that learning. So let's get over to, um, let's get over to Canvas. Oops. And see how I can do that. Let's, how am I going to do a last walk? There we go. All right. So I'm going to share Canvas, and this was my last message 
to you guys. So every time we have a class meeting, I will send out a link right beforehand. I've tried to do it where it's on the calendar and you, ugh, it doesn't work. Zoom, Zoom is still giving me a what for. Um, it trusts me. It tells me right now I have a 40 minute limit, but I'm like, obviously I don't because I'm already past 40 minutes. So it's a weird, I know Zoom expanded very rapidly to, to help with our demand, but um, you know, there's still little kinks in here. So I do send out a meeting link every time and come late, come leave early. It's up to you. It's up to you. So again, our really basic, I just set this up in the most um, user-friendly way possible. I'm really hoping that um, that my ideas of what is user-friendly is user-friendly to everybody. Now, Canvas has changed a little bit. Um, the, like some of the graphics and things like that. And um, I do normally have my own front page. So I'm curious because I usually, I made all these cool graphics and buttons and stuff like that. So I might add that in later. So whatever, you'll see. Uh, announcements is, I do have it. I do have a question. Um, I do have a design option to put announce. So even though announces is a tab, uh, I do have an option to put them here right at the front, meaning like there'll be three to five showing up right here in the front. Do you guys prefer stuff like that or does it matter? How do you access your announcements? Just through email? Anyway. Typically, I yes, unless normal. I'm looking for something. Like so, specifically. Okay, so Molly says email, unless you're looking for something. What else? Who else? I kind of do both. Both. Okay, good. So if I left like the last three announcements up here, like right up here, that would be helpful. Because that's what I usually do, but I don't know if they, I don't know. I have to figure out if they're expecting us to leave it this way or can I mess with it? It says edit, so I think I might just edit it. <laughs> I think it's up to you. I, I usually just either go through my email or I click the announcements link and that's kind of what I'm used to. Yeah, and I and I get it. I think people come to it in different ways. I just want to make sure that nobody's missing them. And if you notice, I'll put CD EV 107 so you know it's coming from me. So you maybe you can filter with that. Um, so now I get announced and have syllabus is going to be your syllabus here. Now, the best thing about the syllabus tab is that <clears throat> at the bottom, it will tell you all everything, like everything that's in this entire class and the due dates. And let's see the, uh, yeah, say I put the outlines on Wednesdays. I'll just move them over all to Fridays. No big deal. So you'll see every single thing. The only thing that I don't really have in there yet is some of the assignments, but I'm trying to polish them up before I put them in there. But this is a copy of the syllabus. You have the PDF here. Um, pretty straightforward. Here's your calendar here. Um, even if you use way over here in the global navigation, use this calendar, you can click by class. And I think this actually can um, download to iCal. Um, I'm not sure, calendar feed, I'm not, I'm not sure if that, I don't integrate it with anything else. I just pull it up here. But here's us. That was the blue, see the blue is 110 and 107 is in green. And so that just tells you, and watch, all I have to do is this, move it over. Now, some of you who have your settings that says, tell me anything that the professor does in that class, you're gonna get a notification that says, the outline date has changed from this date to this date. So you might wanna go ahead and change your settings so you don't see any time. Even if I moved it here and went oops and moved it back, you'll get two notifications. So it's up to you. So again, our first week, if here's here's a little life hack from for what I do. If it says 11.59, it's just a, a read it, just read it. Just read it. Once you read it and go scroll to the bottom and click next, it comes off your to-do list, right? So if it says 11.59, oh, even this one this says, this is 11.59, um, that's just, just read it. Once you read it, it moves, it comes off your to-do list. But if it says 8 p.m., that's a due date. And the reason I put 8 p.m. is because people, when you're waiting till 11.59 and all these other classes have 11.59 and everyone's getting like piled up on each other, get this stuff, get it out of the way, maybe go to bed early, right? And, or prep for the next day, right? So you're not up, up, up till midnight and then winding down till two because that's what I did last night and it was not good. Um, so again, if it's 11.59, it's just a read. So here, when I say, here's the introduction to the chapter, here's the lecture, it's just a, hey, read it, right? And even if you don't even open it up until Wednesday, once you once you read it, it comes off your to-do list. It's not the end of the world. But again, if it says 8 p.m., it's a due date. Cool, makes sense? Yeah, and so here's both, here's both sections. I did one bright green and one light green. 
It looks exactly the same. Good, it's pretty straightforward. So let me go back to dashboard. And um, again, any questions so far? I think we're right on track. We have about, I usually go 10, 15 to 11, 40. So we have about 20 minutes tops. So I don't want to like hammer it. But again, these are all, these four classes are what I'm teaching right now. I have two, I have one starting in a month and two more starting at, at the six week mark. So again, here's dashboard, just click your friend, click it in there. And then we go to modules. Now you'll see, because this is my, this is my edit, my editable version, you'll see all this business. Um, but I don't, or if I hit this one, I'll hit student view and you guys will only see the first three modules, right? Which is so cool. I love this new button right here, collapse all. I'm like, yes, thank you. So these green means that these are the only things that you guys get to see right now. But then after that, it's every, I'm gonna get the bottom of this. It's every single, hold on. It's going slow, sorry. Sweet. Okay, collapse now. Then every module after that, it matches the chapter. That's it. Look at this. Remember we said one, two, three, four was the first unit. Then after that, we have the first two years, the first two years, the first two years. Early childhood, early childhood, early childhood. Middle childhood, middle childhood, middle childhood. Adolescence, adolescence, adolescence. Yeah, pretty straightforward. Inside each module, I have it formulated exactly the same. 1.1 is the intro, 1.2 is the content lecture. Then I have these headers for assignments and assessments. Yeah, and then a summary. So again, I'm a little bit of a nerd. I've been certified to teach, oh my God. I've been certified to teach online since 2013. Holy cow, it's been almost 10 years. Um, I This is the third the third management system, the, the third the third way, the third training, like that I'm taking for this up. So to me, it's all just getting the same information in a very uh, methodical way. So, you know, we're on week four, we're on chapter four, <coughs> excuse me. So let's go back to, let's go back to our actual first week right here. So yes, I separated this into four sections. Okay. We're, this is all prep, right? So this is read this, read this, read this. So once again, once you click it once, see how it says February 8th, that's today. Let's just hopefully, again, everybody has to check in today. So if they checked in and hit this, it's the to-do list is gone. So I'm just giving you guys a breakdown of like, if you're new to Canvas, this is your first semester, your last semester, whatever. If you're really good at it, maybe you can help others. But if you're really new to it, there's video guides, there's the phone number, you're over here, your help button. If you click it once, it'll show you all these, all this stuff. There's so much support for you guys. Like, please, if you have any questions, I will help you find a solution. So once you hit next, it comes off your to-do list. Yeah, you read it, right? That was your 1159 to-do list. Here's your notification settings. Everybody gets to choose that. I also, um, here's how to add a profile picture. Um, I use the mobile app. I use the Pronto app. Um, it just gives you guys some heads up there. And so again, if you just keep clicking through there, it comes off your to-do list. Now we have peer-to-peer -peer support too. So if you're too, a lot of times people are too embarrassed to ask a professor, go ask a student and they'll give it to you straight. Nice. So I gave you all kinds of, uh, and I'm just really impressed that the campus is so, so helpful. So again, here is all this stuff similar to the uh, welcome email. And these are hyperlinks into the actual um, assignments, but you all you have to do is keep pressing next and it'll take you there, right? Here's your chapter one outline. Yeah, go for it. It's also in chapter one module as a, as a free document. It's up to you to have it. Um, let's see, there's me. I already probably told you most about this, but I want you to see this here. I strive to construct an environment instead of um, demanding instruction. Do you see the difference? You and I are co-creating this experience together, even though I set up the bones. Ugh. Because sometimes people want more of this, or sometimes people want less of that, or things are just doable. As a college student, if you're expecting it to be like high school where they just give you all the information and you just put it back on a on a test, that's not it's not gonna work, right? So this is this is us working together. Let's see. Next, keep going through. 
Um, uh, this, this is the, this is the long one. They required us to be very specific about all our policies and whatnot. And this is everything. Again, a lot of people don't read this because it's so long, but again, this, if you want to know, <laughs> if you're going to join us in the live meetings, make sure that you're wearing clothes, um, you know, not like laying down the whole time, things like that. It's okay to eat, you know, that's, so I just have a lot of, um, a lot of instructions in here. It gives you, gives you our work week, um, gives you our points, uh, the course design, the documents that I, and I'm going through this because this is on your scavenger hunt too. The documents that I do accept, I can't, sorry, it, Canvas does not work with dot pages, it just doesn't, sorry. So I can't accept that. You have to find a P, PDF or something similar, similar. How to do well in this course, I just made um, just a quick little situation here that said like, hey, this is how you do well. Um, here's a little PowerPoint that I recorded for you guys. Um, pretty straightforward. Doable. All this stuff is doable in a week. Yeah. I mean, you could read through like 90% of it today and then do one little thing today and tomorrow. So this last, this, this one right here, 3.2, this is the Title IX that we talked about and consent. And so the active shooter is kind of, kind of gnarly, not going to lie. Um, oh, did I not put, I didn't put that one in there because it was gnarly. Um, but this is in case, you know, we'll talk about Title IX. If there's any sort of issue with um, personal autonomy, you let me know. T consent is a cute little way to remember about consent. And then there's a kid's version down here. So again, if you're a teacher, um, it might be something that you want to share with the parents, to share with your kids. But I wouldn't do this one at, in, a, in a teaching environment because it's you'd have to probably get permission. <clears throat> Always here on our campus, we have academic advisement and job placement. They put together a cool little um, cool little um, video here for you. I probably will next week have some people joining our classes. I know um, the health, the, uh, the student health center gal is gonna talk next week. Um, and then I'll probably have these guys talk in, in like the week after. But again, listen, our goal at the community college is not to have you just your nose in a book. Our goal is to get you to work, bottom line, right? And so we are, as child development, we are in the business of getting people as teachers, either preschool teachers or prep for teachers to go be K-12. And we really want you guys to get an, uh, uh, some sort of internship or some job placement, some, something, something that's going to get you out in the field, getting actual experience instead of just, again, being in school forever. The best way to progress through life is to do a little bit of both at the same time. Do a little bit of school and while you're working. And that's why I really love working here because... It's not the, the four-year college student who's like living at home and not paying rent and just, just going to school and not working. This is real life. People here are like, yeah, I worked a third shift and got off the bus to take your class. You know, it's like, or I have three kids or I have a student who, whose husband was in the military and he got uh, signed across in, in like, she's in South Carolina. She's still enrolled. She finished the semester and she's taking another class. It's like, wow, this is realistic. This is real life. So let the business and career ed folks help you. They are really, really great. And I'm, I'm really, really proud to be a part of that. Um, next one is here's our discussion board. Now our discussion board has a little couple of pieces to do. It's kind of fun. And I'll, I tell you what, I'm going to post one too. So after you read all this business, you're going to at the bottom here, you just hit reply and follow these instructions. Okay. You're going to take this personality max survey really quick, really quick. Okay. It's about time. Um, really quick, you're going to hit this personality map survey. It takes up maybe, maybe 20 minutes. Um, heads up, it gives you back a 26 page report. No joke. You do not have to print it out. You do not have to share all of it, but you're going to answer these questions after you, after you do that one. What's your major? Um, what's your intended career? Um, why'd you choose this class? What is your schedule? Now you don't have to be like super psycho and have like my schedules like this. Right. Um, but like, I literally put on there, like, emails, prep, lunch, like yoga, like everything. I fit everything, every class, every grading, everything. Um, and by the way, I share it with everybody, like post it in the house and they still don't read it. Anyways, <laughs> um, what's your schedule? You don't have to get personal about it. Um, you don't have to say like, oh, these are my doctor's appointments and this is my dad's appointment. No, you can just say, these are my classes, whatever. So every once in a while, somebody gets really offended. You can't look at my calendar. I don't need to look at your calendar. Just tell us your schedule. Um, where, where do you study? Yeah, I will share a picture of this part of my workstation. Yeah, absolutely. 
it's because sometimes people are like, um, yeah, I, I study on the floor while my kids are watching TV. It's like, mm, not sure if that's going to work. Um, it could not, not going to not judge in, but, um, we're trying to, and by the way, don't give me like a pottery barn picture of a desk that you want. No, 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 no. People do that too. Oh, this is where I study. It's like, <laughs> don't do that. Cause I can actually do a reverse image search and know that that's not your house. Okay. Um, so don't do that. And then um, here's the results of your personality match report, your personality type. It's a four letter result. Yeah, it's that one where it says, are you introverted or extroverted, right? Are you thinking or feeling? Are you sensing or judging? Like, you'll get it, you'll get it. I don't wanna give you all the answers, right? Multiple intelligences, what's your highest, unless you first two are close. Multiple intelligences are gonna tell you what you're good at. If you're just naturally good at nature stuff, you've got a green thumb, you're gonna have naturalist. If you're just naturally good at music, it's going to say music smart, right? And we will use these in the choice board assignment later. Um, you may have a day, you might be divergent where you're like a little bit good at everything and that's okay too. Pick the one that you're most accurate with. People do tend to argue with a personality match report and I'm not saying it's 100% perfect, um, but when you see the word judging on your first not personality type, that doesn't mean you are a judgy person. It just means that you want your space organized. That's it. I judge my environment a certain way. I, I judge it to, I want it to be this way. People go, I don't agree with personality max. That's not me judgy. Really, it's really, it's not that. So make sure you're actually reading it. Learning styles. Again, a lot of us already know this stuff. Are you visual, auditory, kinesthetic, a combination of the two or the three? Um, and brain hemispheres. Are you a right brain person or a left brain person? The left brain person is more linear, linguistic, logical, right? Right brain is more of that flowery, um, creative, can see outside the box type situation. So just give us a lowdown on this one, right? It doesn't have to be like a massive uh, paragraph, but go for it, right? And then a brief statement on, um, yeah, do you agree or disagree? What did you find interesting? Did you learn something new about yourself? Some people get so freaked out when they're, it says you're good at math. <laughs> God, I am not good at math. <laughs> you could be, especially if you're good at music, because math and music are pretty similar. <sighs> Fractions, <sighs> right? And then, yes, you have to post first before you see other people's posts, right? I did have somebody last year try to copy somebody else's post. I was like, come on, no copying, stop it. Um, again, post appropriately, you know, uh, no hashtags, no emojis, no LOLs, what situation. But have fun meeting your classmates. And so what I do is I pop into this one. I literally look at this as a chat room and I'll pop into this a couple of times this week to see, just to meet you guys and see how you're doing. I'll put my own, um, my own response in there as well. Cool. So once you do that, you're going to post that uh, definitely by Wednesday and then it is due by Sunday. Again, that's the 8 p.m. situation. And then we have a syllabus scavenger hunt. Pull out your syllabus, you know, look through the canvas. And it'll, it's really easy questions. It'll say something like, what file types do I accept? How many weeks in the semester? Things like that, very easy, good. There's no limit on that. You can take it as many times as you want. And then the survey is more of a checklist. Did you get your book? Did you, yeah, did you read the syllabus? Did you, that kind of stuff, right? So super easy. And then, I think that's it. Yeah, check this out. That was it, that was our whole module. That was our whole intro module. This last, this next one is um, a whole new module and we're gonna end there. Okay, so our first week looks like that, course information and prep. And then the whole next module is really just tools for you guys. Hold on, let me get back, get that down. This next module, because supportive information, use these to make your life easier. Look at all this stuff I put in here, just to make things easier for you. You can use it in this class or other classes, check this out. <clears throat> this give, this tells you that right there. It's all optional, it's up to you. Just read it by next week. Again, these are like mindset, talk about mindset with people all the time, I love it. We even had a training on mindset with professors and some people were new to it. I was like, please, please, well, I will ask you this. I think it was like chapter eight, we'll talk about mindset for ourselves. External tech, these are some of the things that we use in this class. A big, big fan of Grammarly. Speech notes is audio texting. If you don't like typing your, your, your outlines, do it. Just talk to it and it'll do it for you. VLC media player, I use that every day. 
book creator app. I used to assign that, but I'm saying it's optional. Portfolio we use at the end. In fact, let me, let me book this, put this down here. Um, no, I'll keep portfolio at the top. Um, spelling and grammar, this gives a couple, I'll keep adding to this because I still see this. I know people, grown people who don't know the difference between there, there, and there, and things like that. So um, MLA formatting guide, that's just like if you're going to turn in a paper, it's the one inch margins, 12 point font, two point double space, you got it. Um, outlines, these are all, uh, these are all examples on how to outline, how to mind map, Cornell notes work, doodle notes, it's up to you, however you want to do it. I also give you study guides on how to hack and also how to hack your essay on the exam. You could, since you can take your exam twice, you can always do your true false multiple choice business, cut and paste that essay out, work on it. You can even go to the writing center and work on it and then put it back in on your second chance. Yeah, I give you those examples. Trauma-informed practices, we will talk about this. Um, we are all facing trauma brain in the middle of COVID. It's not, we're still in the middle. Um, so again, and we actually have a new class coming up on just trauma and resilience. I will share in an announcement, maybe, maybe it's a flyer for you guys. Um, Self-care, huge on making it through the semester. Trust me, I don't have, this is my yogi that I, uh, <clears throat> that I see every Wednesday night. I do not teach classes because I, Sundays and Wednesdays I do. And it's, uh, her, her Facebook is free or her Insta is free, um, but she does teach for $8 a class um, through everybody LA. And so I'll put that in there as well. Um, extra credit, here's documentaries, uh, future teacher resources, but any of these things are free for you guys. Do all this business. And so this stuff, we'll talk special books for special kids is, is in my intro to special needs class. We'll talk more about those things, but I like to share things, um, for our people just in case you need it for the future. Yeah. So that's just an extra little bonus module I left at the, at the top for you guys under our prep week. Here's our bonus module and week one. That's it. Yeah, here's your sample outline right here. Everything's set up, ready for you to go. Uh, week one, excellent. Any questions before I let us go? When do we have to get our book by? Well, I would say um, next week would be great because you do have a quiz next week and I won't give you the outline. And you have to turn an outline by Friday. So I would say <laughs> however long it takes you to, to do an outline plus your due date Friday. So if it takes you a couple hours, like make sure hopefully you get it by Thursday. An electronic version is great. Um, if you're on like the fee waiver, bog waiver, you get a book stipend, um, go to our bookstore. I do not use the Cengage business, but all you do is not use the access code and then you get more book, more on buyback. So if, if it comes bundled and that's the only way you can get it, just don't use the access code or the CD or however they do it. Uh, I don't use any publisher materials like that. I don't know. Yeah, so get your book as soon as you can. Definitely it's not mandatory for a week one, but by week two, yeah, for sure. Good question. What else, what else can I answer? Two more before I let us go. <laughs> Did I answer all? the questions um for wednesday when you do the discussion board zoom yeah uh if you attend that and you participate would you still have to post on discussion board nope i will actually grade it after the class is over oh okay yeah so that's the upside now maybe that's your first choice but like not every week you'll be able to come but it works when it, when you come We'll do it right there. We'll basically participate. I'll grade you that. I'll put in your, submit that grade that day. And then if not, then you just do the regular discussion board. Yeah, you don't have to pick like one, the same one every week. You can switch it up. It's up to you. Great, great question. Last one, and I'll let us go. I just stare. I just stare at you guys. Nothing. Okay. I will, I will send you off with this. Um, read through the syllabus, all the policies, all the stuff for week one. Let me know if there's any typos. I challenge you guys. There probably are. So enjoy <laughs> your extra scavenger hunt for fun. All right. Great meeting you guys. It was really cool to see you. Um, let's see, Eddie. Thanks for jumping in. Sorry about this. 
I know the tech can be funky and Teresa, Monique, Summer, Daniela, um, Alexis. Let me check, check everybody's name on here. Yay. Alexis, Alicia. Hey, great meeting you guys. And I will see you Wednesday. Yeah. But let me know if there's any other questions. Just make sure you put it in the Canvas inbox. And I will get to you as soon as possible. We're going to have a great semester. I promise. All right. I'll, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. <laughs> Bye. Well, let me see. Happy this. Yay.